All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us for this very special menu labeling webinar. Today we are joined by a distinguished panel of individuals who took the menu labeling re regulations head on and came out still standing. Today they will be sharing their journey to compliance, including what, we, what worked and what was a challenge along the way. My name is TJ and I'll be your moderator today. I handle business development for MenuTrendFo, which means I speak with different companies every day who are struggling to try to come to terms with these regulations. I am joined by Claire. She's a rock star and she is our Director of Nutrition. She's worked with a dozen, dozens and dozens of brands across the country to become compliant with the menu labeling law. She will be here to help answer any questions specific to the reg regulations themselves or to provide some insight based on her experience with other brands. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and take you through a couple of housekeeping items. We will be muting you during today's webinar so you won't have to worry about the background noise. The only exception is for our panelists and they're on the phones and live right now. On your screen you'll see a small chat box. Use that chat box to type any question you have as we go through the slides today. At the end of the webinar, we'll be able to get them answered. You guys, this is a rare opportunity to speak with those in the industry who have worked through the regulation firsthand. So please do not be shy. Ask questions and they can help us all see better. <clears throat> if for any reason the audio does go out during today's webinar, just stay on the line and you'll be placed into a lobby and be reconnected once we get the audio back up. If you happen to lose the connection on your end, just dial back in and you'll be placed right back into the webinar. And finally, we will not be providing a recording of this webinar. So please take notes, ask lots of questions, so you can take all this good information back to your brands. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and read our disclaimer in its entirety. The content shown here is for educational purposes only and it does not constitute legal advice. We are not lawyers and do not claim to be. You are encouraged to verify any and all parts of this presentation with your own brand's legal counsel. Menu Trinfo will not be held responsible for fines or other penalties that arise from recommendations that, we, that were made following our best understanding of all published laws and supplemental guidance documents. This webinar contains material protected under international and federal, federal copyright laws and treaties. Any unauthorized reprint or use of any kind of this material is prohibited. No part of this webinar may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means electronic or mechanical, including photocopying, recording, or by any information storage and retrieval system without expressed written permission from Menu Trimfo LLC, the author publisher. <clears throat> Before we dive into the content of today's webinar, we'd like to give you a little bit of background on our company, Menu Trimfo. This isn't a sales pitch, so don't worry. Menu Trinfo is a, is a mashup of the words Menu Nutrition Information, Menu Trinfo, which describes what we do. We are a full service nutrition consultant to the industry. We provide nutrition information through our proprietary software and database, as well as allergen identification, gluten free menu reviews, specialty menu development, and menu labeling consulting. We also have one of the only ANSI accredited food allergy training programs in the nation through Allotrain. We offer a suite of courses to accommodate all facets of the food service industry, including K-12 school staffs, colleges, universities, <coughs> dining facilities, and of course, restaurants and similar retail food establishments. We provide our courses in a number of different formats, including live taught classes or e-learning platforms. Now, of course, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without our incredible clients, and we have a handful of them on the webinar today, including our three wonderful panelists. Thank you all for joining. We are very grateful to you. 
This slide shows you just a few of the incredible brands we have the honor of working with. After this webinar, if you're interested in learning more about our services or what our nutrition partnership looks like, hey, please feel free to give us a call. We definitely would love to talk to you. We'll be sending out an email to all the participants today with our contact information and would love to hear from you. All right, now that we've got all the housekeeping tasks behind us, let's go ahead and dive into this webinar. I also want to introduce our panel. It's comprised of three industry leaders from convenience store, restaurant, and grocery store spaces. Our first panelist is Michael J. Smith, the category manager of food service R&D for Speedway LLC, which operates over 2,740 stores in, the, in 21 states. He's been with Speedway for over 36 years. He spends most of his time researching, developing, and testing new products and equipment for Speedway's different food platforms. In addition, he is a li liaison between Speedway stores and health and agriculture departments from a food safety standpoint, and now the self-proclaimed menu labeling guru, but only because of his wingman, Menu Trenfo. Thanks for the shout out there, Michael. Up next, we have Amanda McArdle. <clears throat> Amanda is the VP of Brand and Franchise Services for Famous Recipe Group, the franchisor of Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken brand. For those of you unfamiliar with Lee's, they are a franchise QSR chain founded in 1966, specializing in chicken, home-style sides, and biscuits. Lee has 150 stores and is, has a presence in 13 states. Welcome, Amanda, and thank you for joining us as well. All right, last but certainly not least is Carrie Taylor. Carrie is the lead registered dietitian for Big Y Foods, Inc., <clears throat> based in Springfield, Massachusetts. Since 2005, Carrie has been giving customers the tools to live the lives they deserve with the Living Well, Eating Smart wellness program. Big Y Foods is family-owned and managed with 70 retail food locations spread equally between Massachusetts and Connecticut. Nearly three years ago, Carrie began leading an internal team to meet the nutritional labeling requirements for the Affordable Health Care Act, meanwhile establishing co collaboration with the nutrition team at Menu Tr Trimfo. Carrie was kind enough to join us despite the less than desirable northeastern weather today. Thank you, Carrie, for that. We know you're, it's, uh, it's been crazy out that way. <clears throat> All right, what has your menu labeling journey looked like so far? So to kick things off, I'd like to ask each of our panelists what their menu labeling journey has, has looked like. For this section, we will ask our panelists to answer the, in the same order as the introductions. So Michael, that means we'll be starting with you. This here is just to try to understand a general overview here on what you guys have gone through. And so, <clears throat> Michael, what has your menu labeling journey look, look like thus far? Okay, so my journey, which really started back in late 2014, early 2015, when we first found out about menu labeling, I know my boss came to me and he asked if I could take this on. So my initial thoughts were, well, what does this have to do with food service R&D? But as usual, you know, when your boss asks for something, you just do it. Besides, I like challenges, and this is one of those that would get me out of my comfort zone. But most important would be to ensure Speedway would be in compliance once menu labeling became effective and into the future as well. Knowing the significance of this, I was like, sign me up now. So the obvious first thing that you know, I did was to read the entire menu labeling guideline. So I think that was somewhere around 58 pages. And I did this again and again and again and again, just trying to wrap my head around understanding what the guidelines were. I remember way back when that my brain was hurting a lot during this time, you know, trying to interpret those guidelines to me was difficult as I could get multiple interpretations for some of the same guidelines. So I'd ask myself which one was correct. I would highlight things, put notes in columns, and it just, it was, it was 
just not clear to me. I was confused, somewhat stressed, and I realized that I needed help, uh, not just to help understand what those guidelines were, but this was going to take a lot of a time. And I have a lot of work to do and other things that I'm responsible for. My schedule stayed pretty full, so my question was, how was I going to fit this in? Uh, so the first thing I did was I reached out to Nax, and they put me in touch with their outside legal group that was handling menu labeling. But things were still not clear after talking to them. At this point, I started researching, and the name Menu Trinfo kept surfacing. After viewing their website, I decided to reach out to them and have conversation about menu labeling. As it turned out, I am convinced this was the best decision I could make for Speedway regarding menu labeling compliance. We got the agreement completed and went to work. Betsy Craig, who is the CEO, actually flew out to our corporate office and we went out and visited some of our stores. We have some different types of food platforms, so she wanted to get an overview of all of them. Um, she took like what seemed to be a million pictures and talk through what we would need to do. Then she went back, they put together a very well presented presentation and actually sort of spelled things out. So that big mountain all of a sudden became a smaller mountain as I was starting to see a path to the end. You know, all of a sudden my brain didn't hurt anymore and the picture was getting clearer. Next, then we had this go and ready to go. We had to get a list of all of our products and get them over to them. Uh, I was introduced to Julie and that she would be my main contact. And for everyone listening today, a little shout out to Julie. She's awesome. Um, <laughs> we were already doing some nutritionals using our own off-the-shelf software program. So we had a bunch of, we used 100-gram uh, nutritional forms that we would send to our vendors and they would fill them out and then we would complete some nutritionals that way. So Julie could use those, so we sent those over to help get it started, but we had a lot of products that we did not have nutritional forms for, particularly on drinks. And all we had to do was provide Julie with the vendor contact information, and she took over from there. This would have been very time consuming, so to be able to pass it off was very helpful. Next thing I know, Julie is sending uh, reports over to me, nutritional analysis and recipes. Uh, I use the nutritional analysis report to get calorie information that we will use on our signs, as well as it's the same information that we need to provide as additional information for your guests. The rest report is great because on one spreadsheet are recipes for all of our products. Um, and I believe our first report had over 700 menu items on it that was completed. These reports are updated as new products are added. I just love these reports because of all the information that is available on just two short reports. And as a matter of fact, I keep them open on my laptop all the time because I constantly rinse them. They are just awesome. So from here, I got all the information back. Uh, I used their presentation on my sort of my uh, roadmap and we started producing signs. Uh, we have somewhat of a couple different platforms. We got a bunch of self-serve, uh, basically customers grabbing products, grab-and-go sandwiches, pizza, etc. And then we have another caf uh, platform called Speedy Cafe in which our customers actually order through a kiosk and then the food is made fresh uh, on the back line and provided to the customer. So we used all that information with the reports to calories for signs, uh, the, the kiosk, there's a million pages on the kiosk. We had to make sure as you customers were going through those that all the calories were there, so we got that all done. So went through all that. Um, our stores installed those signs in early 2017, um, even though we found out a little bit later that menu label got delayed, we still had them up and have been operating as such since. Um, but just a couple of things I wanted to mention though too is that was a long journey. I mean, it's only a couple of short paragraphs I talked about right now. Uh, it's, it's very difficult, it's time consuming, and you need to have the knowledge to be able to get there end of the day, which is what I learned. But a couple other things I wanted to mention is that we at Speedway, we make our own retail labels 
and we use them in our label makers or we provide those to vendors. Uh, Menu Trinfo will produce those fax panels for us and ingredient statements, and then we can easily copy those into our label maker software or provide them to the vendor. So it's just more services that they provide to us that are available, and it just makes our jobs a lot easier. So to sum up the journey, I can honestly say the best decision I made was to bring Menu Trinfo on board. To me, this was going to be too complex and too time consuming for me to accomplish. Menu Trinfo staff proved to me early on they knew what they were doing and they were well educated on menu labeling. Having someone on your team that knows the subject matter inside and out is priceless. They even get in front of the FDA folks and try to get answers. Now, how could I ever do that? That would be impossible for me. Um, they also have our information in their database. So if we switch out a product, so for example, we change an American cheese that's on a million items, they can insert that and it automatically updates my recipes, my reports. And for me to have to be able to do that by myself would be a nightmare. So don't try this by yourself. So in closing and on a personal note, I would like to say how much I appreciate what Menu Trinfo staff does. As a vendor partner, they are my absolute favorite and I work with a ton of vendors. They are knowledgeable, they are dedicated, they are reliable, and something that is really important to me on the vendor thing is they don't disappoint. Not once in the years that we've been working together have they failed to get me something on a timely basis. If I call, 99% of the time they answer, and if I leave a message, they get right back to me. So in a sense, they treat you like family, and that's just cool. Thank you. Well, Michael, thank you. You actually made me feel all mushy and gushy inside <laughs> there. Uh, we, we, appreciate, we appreciate you. All right, uh, let's go on to Amanda. Amanda, do you have any, any words there to add? Sure, I've got, I've got a spiel. Um, hello <laughs> and, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, you know, I want to start by just saying thanks to TJ and Claire and all of the Menu Trimpa team for, for just asking me to be a part of this webinar. Uh, I feel compelled sort of right up front to clarify. I would not consider myself an expert on menu labeling. Uh, you know, to be honest, I'm not even sure the FDA can call themselves the experts. Um, I do, however, feel comfortable calling myself an expert on the labeling of Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken's menu boards, which is what I was asked to speak to you guys about today. Um, so I would say, reflecting back from start to finish, that there were three key areas that ultimately got us to calorie-counted menu boards, and that was the designing of the menu boards, uh, weight testing for the nutritional analysis, and then calculating all of our calorie ranges. So the first thing we did, we, we started with designing the menu boards. And, you know, we anticipated this would be difficult, and it did not disappoint. It was a challenge. Our first drafts, um, they were overwhelming. Uh, they, they read like a book. So we adopted the mantra that uh, white space is good and readability is key. And, and with that in mind, we began to make some changes. And Lee's ultimately got to the place where we offered the system several mini board designs to choose from. So as a franchise brand and as the franchisor, we wanted to give each of our franchisees, who are the independent business owners of our brand, we wanted to give them options. On a typical Lee's restaurant, we have six mini board panels on display, and our system has 23 to choose from when they select which six that they're going to hang. Um, and those options, they range from, you know, displaying as many menu offerings as that panel will allow, and then to, you know, a, a more simplified or perhaps even some would call a cleaner version, and then there's some options in between. Um, the <laughs> The second point that I made earlier was nutritional analysis. Uh, that gathering of data for Julie, who, who by the way, is also our nutritionist, and, and I'm jumping on Michael's uh, bandwagon to give her a shout out. She's awesome. Uh, the gathering of that data for Julie, it was exponentially more detailed and time consuming than, than we expected. It honestly, it had never occurred to me that the nutritional content of, say, a fried piece of chicken that it could be affected by the type of fryer it is cooked in and whether that piece of equipment is gas or electric powered. So reserving the time 
and coordinating one of our ops field guys to perform the weight test on all of our products in all of the different types of ovens and fryers, it was a challenge. It was a big hurdle for us. And it, it took considerably longer than we originally anticipated. And then, uh, so the last key area I'm going to mention is, is calculating the caloric data. So for like family meals, combos, et cetera, we had to calculate that data to ultimately display on our menu board. Seems easy enough, you know, before I started, I remember thinking to myself, you know, I'm glad I'm not in the pizza or the sandwich business. Like, how do you calculate for a build your own pizza or sandwich? And then I, I really dug in and started putting pen to paper, so to speak, and quickly began to think to myself, like, man, those pizza guys, they have it so much easier than we do. <laughs> <laughs> and what you have to understand about Lee's Chicken is that we offer three different flavor profiles. So we have our famous recipe, we have spicy, and we have oven roast. And then we offer that in boneless options and classic chicken or, you know, traditional bone-in chicken. And then another consideration for us is that chicken can be cut in eight pieces or nine pieces. And we have some stores that, based on regional preferences, sell one or the other. And so just as a quick example, a 12-piece family meal, to calculate the calorie ranges, and in order to make sure each and every option was accounted for, there are actually 32 different caloric ranges for that one menu item. So just to wrap up, um, you know, three key areas. That's what I see has got us to calorie counted menu boards, and it's the design of the menu board, the nutrition analysis, and then calculating the possible ranges. Uh, getting there, it was a challenge. It was harder than we expected. Uh, some tough decisions had to be made. But overall, we embraced it, um, and Lee's is proud to be transparent to our consumer and we provide them with consistent and particularly important to us certified, certified by Menu Trento, nutritional and allergen information. All right, Amanda, thank you. I, I love two things there. I love that you said white space is good. I don't know if a lot of people uh, have heard that or, or think that way, so that's awesome. And then the last bit there, you said proud to be transparent, you know, reveal, not conceal. That's a, it's a fantastic uh, mindset that you guys have as well. All right, Carrie, do you want to jump in here and uh, tell us about your, your journey? Sure. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for having me speak. And as a registered dietitian, some may assume that having a dietitian on staff means you have built in an in house expert on menu labeling. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, during our coursework, we don't go through nutrition analysis on recipes and talking about deep frying foods or even baking foods, we don't learn those calculations. So our journey here at Big Y for the dietitian team was interesting because all of our different management teams came together in the beginning and said, okay, well, we have this responsibility now. How are we going to address it? And our first real discussion was trying to say, hey everyone, we're your dietitians, but not only do we not have the time or the resources to work on this project, we also don't have the experience in doing this analysis. So let's consider contracting this out. And we are a Topco member, so Topco was interviewing different prospective vendors for their members, and they allowed me to sit in on the discussions for a couple, and then Utrinfo was one. So the first task I had as the lead dietitian here was kind of bringing to the table, okay, these are our options. This is how much this vendor will cost. This is what they're going to offer us and, and kind of show the portfolio of options. And after talking to Betsy and talking to Claire and presenting it to our team here, it was a no-brainer to go with Menu Trinfo. And that was a while ago. And because we are a, a food retailer, we have about four different mini restaurants in all of our locations. So we have a pretty expansive food service and bakery, and then our seafood does options made to order, um, like a seafood, fast food restaurant may do. And then we have our deli, of course. So um, getting everyone together and kind of making sure everyone has an understanding of the most important takeaways of menu labeling um, really showed our ability to have 
Various groups come together from IT, operations, marketing, sales, and really keep emphasizing, okay, we need to make sure we have this information formatted this way and sent to menu and phone, sent to Claire. And it's a lot of big meetings and a lot of littler meetings and face-to-face -face conversations. But we were aiming for that May 5th deadline last year. And we, we started working early, but it was a sprint because you know, last minute changes happen with suppliers and ingredients, and although the changes are quick on the menu Trinfo end, it impacts a lot of signage. So we launched it, and then, you know, a week or so later, <laughs> then the deadline was extended. But the one saving grace is this past year being able to kind of take a breather, follow up with our stores, make sure they're executing it like they need to be, updating recipes as they come through. And when I step away from it and I'm a little rusty, I call up Claire at Many Trends Bell and I say, remind me why we did this or remind me how we should go about handling this. And as a dietitian, you know, we are experts in all different areas, but menu labeling is just one of those areas. So it's become very important to have the experts outside of Big Y to kind of lean on and also have that responsibility outside of us too because it makes me feel better <laughs> as the lead of the program, knowing that it's not just on my shoulder. All right, excellent. I like that you guys had the various groups come together. I talked to a lot of people, and this is a, a big challenge, trying to work with everybody, like you said, the IT with the RDs and, and marketing and all those folks trying to get it out. I think it's important to make it a collaboration. All right, well, I appreciate that. We're going to jump right in here to the Q&A section, um, <clears throat> which has been provided by Menu Trimfo Nutrition Department. So just, just a reminder to keep sending in your questions for the panelists, you guys out there listening. Uh, we, will get, we will try to get to all those at the end of today. To our panelists, if, you, if a question does not apply to you or you prefer not to answer, please just say pass. That will work. Uh, we will direct the, quest, the questions to each of you individually. But if you have anything to add during another panelist's turn, pl please feel free to jump in. I will say that uh, we have 10 questions here, and so <clears throat> we'll try to uh, get through as many of them as we can in our allotted time here. So if you uh, so kind of keep that in mind, panelists, as we're asking these questions. All right, I, I just do want to say I'm excited about these questions, what we have here. I love, I love hearing from real people on how they're actually doing uh, the challenges they're facing and what they've done to, to get themselves compliant. So let's jump right in with question one. <clears throat> and Amanda, we'll start with you first, okay? Question is, what is the biggest menu labeling challenge that you have faced, and how did you overcome or work through that challenge? Yeah, so I touched on this one in my opening. For us, I'd really have to say it was the weight test for the nutritional analysis, and in particular, chicken. Uh, chicken's a natural fall product. Not every bird is exactly the same size. Of course, we have standards. All of our chicken falls within a spec, but we had to make sure we got enough samples to uh, get a sufficient average. And, you know, I touched on it earlier. We had to consider eight-piece, nine-piece, boneless, bone-in, the different flavor profiles, the equipment. And that's before we actually got to the recipe. Um, we're fresh. We're never frozen chicken brand. Um, nothing comes into our restaurants frozen or battered, so we marinate, we honey, we honey dip, and we hand bread in house. And we had to make sure, you know, we weighed before and after each of these steps. And, and Julie was particularly helpful with this process. I worked very closely with her to determine, you know, exactly which steps within each recipe required weight testing. And we ultimately we ended up performing. 950 weight tests, and there were over 2,300 individual weights within those tests. Uh, this, this took a lot of coordination. Uh, my spreadsheets, they had spreadsheets, um, <laughs> consistent, <laughs> they did, um, consistent, clear communication with our ops team, as well as the restaurants that they would be visiting to test in. That was, that was key to us, that was critical. And then um, every handwritten, signed, and dated test form, we returned it to Julie, um, which, which was important. Um, in the event any of our nutritional values are challenged, Menu Trimfo not only has their calculations in the database to support it, but they have all of the written 
you know, documentation of our raw data as well. So, yeah, weight testing, that was, that was a challenge for us and something I didn't see ahead of time. <laughs> okay. All right. How about you, Carrie? Biggest challenge? So, just like Amanda, I kind of addressed it in the introduction. The biggest challenge at first was really explaining the limitations that we had internally. Um, we really tried to convince um, everyone that came to the table that if we did it internally, we would have to hire a team. It wouldn't just be the responsibility of one person because we have so many different things going on and changes, as Claire can attest to, to our offerings pretty rapidly sometimes. So that was the first one. And then really because you have so many people at the table and we are bringing all those teams together, really reining everyone in, reining the discussions in, really wrapping your brain around the different expertise at the table. For me as the lead, I was the liaison between all these departments and being a dietitian, I'm not an IT person, so having them walk it through with me so I can then explain it to our bakery team, um, that was really the biggest challenge. And okay trying to be patient as possible with everyone and, and just say, you know what, everyone breathes, we're going to make it, we're doing good. <laughs> Claire tells us we're ahead of the, the ball here, so <laughs> everyone's doing well, and I think that helped with the team. Yeah, patience, I think that's a challenge in, in all of us. All right, Michael, what, what's the, I think you probably mentioned as well in the beginning, but uh, just to reiterate, what was the biggest challenge you faced? Yeah, I think initially it was just understanding what we needed to do to be in compliance uh, for the different food platforms that we have and how we do that. But uh, um, along with that, too, some of the, the, the paint stuff and all that was simply like they're talking on way, and we had to go back and for every recipe make sure everything was reweighed and even pre-cook, after cook. And now we're just now getting into fryers <laughs> and and starting to understand how the type of oil, the temperature, and all that of the fryer can make a difference. So uh, adding a little more to it right now. But I think the biggest thing is once you understand it and how to go about it in your business, that's like one block done. You can check that off. Then you can start attacking each of those stations and programs individually, and it sort of takes that big mountain and shrinks it down in size. Yeah. Yeah, once we can get educated, we can start to understand and see things a little bit better for sure. All right, let's jump into question two here. <clears throat> Carrie, we'll start with you. What, if any, training and or procedures have you implemented to ensure you stay compliant with the regulation? So for procedures, it's really a lot of transparency and conversations together. Um, we have those group meetings on a regular basis. Throughout this year, we've had a few just kind of touching base with everyone. Um, and also just really hitting the main points. I think um, the legislation has so much to it and really knowing what's relevant for the team leads in the different sales departments. And then for our training, we have merchandisers out in the field in our stores, and then our sales office with regular meetings with their, their team, really emphasizing the importance of not going off script, <laughs> of keeping the standardization of the recipes at the foremost forefront of their day, because historically, you may run out of a topping for a pizza here, or you know, have something come in over there and you want to add it to the menu. And it's really been our, our sales team's emphasis in these meetings of saying, okay, again, menu labeling is very important. It may have backed off for the deadline, but we need to make sure we're staying standard and every store is offering the same thing and that we have the menus available for our shoppers and if you're out, who to call. So it's just that constant, consistent conversation is really the training and procedures that we follow. Wonderful, wonderful. Michael, what are you guys doing at Speedway there for training and procedures? Okay, so a couple of things. So from operation standpoint, their big thing is just make sure really that the signs are up and all that. So 
Uh, one, we've put a nice document out there. It's been sent to all the stores. We've added it to our ops manual. Uh, we've included it into our, our, our training as well as the we do our own training in-house. It's been added to that. Um, and in addition, we also do our own inspections in our stores. We've got food, sta food safety inspection and a customer standards inspection to make sure we're ready. And so our inspectors will be looking for the appropriate signs to make sure that they are up and that they are in, you know, they're, they're not tattered or anything, they're in good shape and go that route. Internally, um, we work with, everything will run through me over here on this right now, and so all the other food groups, we got what's called project trackers. And when you come up with a new item or whatever, it's changed, one of those items on the list is does this affect menu labeling? And if it does, then it's on the list. There's dates that have to be uh, applied and all that. And so we should have it covered from both internally and externally now. Okay, very nice, very nice. <clears throat> Amanda, what are you guys doing training-wise? Just like Michael, I have a, a two-part answer. Um, I'm going to speak to what we're doing at a corporate level and then uh, what they're doing in the Lee's restaurants, what's happening at a store level. Uh, so at a corporate level, we've been working with each manufacturer and supplier, and we've been going back and amending our agreements with them. And those amendments, they specifically include verbiage about the FDA regulations, and it requires them to notify us if an ingredient or a recipe is changed. In addition to that, then we're putting together a schedule of follow-up and check-ins so that we can make sure that, you know, that we're checking in just to, to see if anything was changed without us being notified. And then for the restaurants, um, we've provided a poster with the who, why, and what of calorie counts. It's a, it provides a brief description of the requirements of the FDA you know, requirement and then why calories have been added to menu boards. It explains why some values are single, why some have a forward slash, others are hyphenated. And in addition to the poster, each location has been provided with what we call dialogue cards. And there are two versions, one for the front of the house and one for the back of the house. And these dialogue cards contain a, um, you know, a few of the most common questions that we anticipate they, need, they may be asked and how it's appropriate for them to respond. Wow, love that, love that. Those are great. Great ideas there, poster and, and cards. Good job. All right, let's go to question number three. <clears throat> Michael, we'll start with you again. Did you make any changes to your menus or offerings as a result of needing to become compliant with the menu labeling regulation? We'll make this short and sweet. We did not. Nothing. Didn't we didn't have to do anything. Okay, simple enough. Amanda. How about you? Yes, uh, we did, and we did in a couple of ways. Um, the first of which was to eliminate some products. Uh, about 80% of our sales, it comes from 20% of our menu. And so, um, you know, we would never consider any changes to that tier of products or what I call our sweet spot. Um, but there were some items that didn't make the cut. For example, some desserts. We're a fried chicken concept, and desserts are less than 2% of what we do. Um, Another change we made was on our actual menu boards or the design of them. In some instances, there is less room to list menu offerings, and in other areas, the menu offerings may be presented in a different way. And I'll give you two examples. Um, the first is prior to the FDA on our, our side items, the space on our menu board for side items. Um, in the past, we've had 15 options listed there. But when we started to add the calorie counts, to those 15 different listings, it was just too much and, and it was hard to read. So um, on the new, you know, the panels, the FDA compliant panels, that space is now limited to being able to feature 10 side items. And then another mm -hmm. example, and, and this one might be a little more uh, cumbersome for me to explain, so I'm going to do the best that I can here. Um, I mentioned in the beginning we gave our operators options when selecting their menu board panels. And many of our restaurants, um, like to give the customer an option when choosing their combos. We display combos, four combos to a panel. Um, our restaurants like to give them an option of a combo with one side item or a combo with two side items. 
So underneath each picture, there's two different price points. And so we have a combo um, panel that's designed where it's exactly the same, and we just added the two calorie counts underneath you know, one side item or two side items. But then we also designed an alternate panel that's available. It still has the same four combos listed on it, but underneath each it has one side item and one price point. But at the bottom of that panel we added a tagline that says add a side, and it gives a price and it gives the calorie range. So it's the same data, but we've presented it in two different ways. Interesting. That's interesting that uh, I think it the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, applies to your menu as well. It seems to be consistent across many things. Carrie, how about yourself, a big why? Any, any changes to your menus? Um, not at all. <laughs> not at um, all. Except for adding more, as Claire can <laughs> attest to. <laughs> uh, the, the only thing that changed was really the marketing pieces. Um, we didn't we didn't cut any of our offerings. We tidied up, I think, the way we communicated our offerings to our shoppers. And um, really, as our food service was growing during the process of rolling out menu labeling, uh, really expanding the number of marketing pieces we had to have in store, whether it came from a salad bar we added to one store or a wing bar in another store or a chef case in another store, we just found ourselves keep adding more in more marketing pieces. Very good, very good. Right, let's jump on to question number four here. <coughs> Amanda, we'll start with you. How are you making your additional nutrition informational information available to your guests? Um, yeah, okay, so we, we make it available through our website, and then every time there's an update, if something were to change, we e-blast it out to our system so that, they're, so that they're aware there has been a change. And then, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, we're a franchise system. So we've left the store-level decision on how to provide it to the customer up to each independent operator. And as far as I'm aware, there's been three different, uh, three different options. People have gone three different ways. Um, the first, they've made it a part of their pre-opening um, task. And so they've assigned somebody each morning to go on to, to our website, to the national website, and uh, print a copy of it, and they just make sure that that's available up at the front counter should they be asked for it. I know others have printed it offline, and then they've laminated that, and that's what stays up at the counter. And then we have a third set who have uh, chosen to pre-print them into a pad, you know, so that they can just peel off one and hand it to the customer when asked. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. Carrie, uh, how about you guys? How are you making this available? One of the discussions that kept going back and forth was certain departments wanted to have printed information because historically that's how our customers would get details about the products that they sold in that department. A vast majority of us wanted it digitally. And so we, in working with IT and working with Trinfo, figured out the best mode would be going in our price checkers. So when you are in a big Y store, you can do a price check at a different scanner throughout the store. And we added that information there. So if someone wants additional nutrition information um, because of diabetes or heart disease, they can go there and find all the rest of the information. Wow, I like that. That's cool. It's a good way to do it. All right, question number five. Did we get Michael? Oh, no, we, we did. We missed Michael. Did Sorry, Michael. I was, I was skipping you there. My okay. bad. How about, how about yourself? You got okay, so this one was actually pretty easy. I mean, although we have a tremendous number of stores, they're all company-owned. We have a – our loyalty program is called Speedy Rewards, and we have a terminal in every store so the customers can use that to access to rewards and redeem and all that. So we're putting all the additional information – right on that terminal. So you don't need a loyalty card to access it. Anyone can just walk up to it, hit the nutritional thing, and then it will be sorted like by bakery sandwiches and all that. And as a consumer, then you can just look up whatever you want, ingredient statements, allergens, and any of the nutritional values and facts that you would need to know. Wow. 
That makes it nice and easy. That's a mm-hmm. that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Number five here. Carrie, this one will start with you. How are you planning on handling any product or recipe changes that occur to ensure that you stay in compliance? So, <laughs> if you haven't had the takeaway yet, we like to talk a lot at Big Y. <laughs> so, discussions with the different departments to make sure that when they have a supplier change, if they have a recipe change, that they are communicating that with Claire and they're CCing me on the email, they're communicating it with me. If they're having any type of signage change affected, they're communicating it with marketing. Some of our signage is printed automatically um, in the computer system, so as long as the menu info data is updated, that will print. But if it is a marketing piece, making sure that all of us are involved. And so we do, I do work in marketing. That's who I report to is advertising and marketing. So within our department, if anyone receives a job order from a department, they'll walk it over to me and say, did you know this change was coming? <laughs> did you know we're going to make these updates? And we have bright orange pieces of paper that we affix to any job for the department that's impacted by menu labeling. Okay. Michael, how are you guys handling the changes? Uh, so really our biggest piece here is we've got to loop in and tighten up controls on vendor products that sometimes are switching out ingredients and we don't know that so we're working on that piece but uh, you know if there's a product change again it's all part of our project tracker that um, if it's included in the recipe change and we we get new nutritional information or ingredients and all that then that will be checked and then uh, if we have to make new decals or signs or whatever it is or update the kiosk um, that will all be done as part of that project tracker. So we still got to work on the vendor piece a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Amanda? Yeah, uh, kind of like Carrie, I wouldn't necessarily say we have a formal plan uh, other than, you know, to be flexible and sort of react as quickly as possible. Uh, we have built some systems that make it easy for us to handle any changes. Um, obviously, we have our database of recipes with menu Trimvo, and and that makes it easy and quick for them to reevaluate any recipe or in, or ingredient changes. Um, we've also built an internal database for all of our caloric values. Uh, it's digital, and each operator has online access. So if we need to change a caloric value, all we have to do is log on to the back end of that system and make the change. And then operators with impacted menu boards, they can log on, they can order an updated panel. And, and the system allows for newer revised panels to be ordered, printed, shipped, and received within two to three weeks. Very nice. Flexibility. I love that word. I think that's the key to success. Uh, let's go to number question number six here. Michael, we'll start with you. Have you had any hesitation from individual locations or franchisees about posting the nutrition information? If so, how did you work through that and handle the situation? Okay, yeah, we're going to make this pretty quick here because we're all company owned, so really yeah. was no fallback from that, nor did we receive any concerns from operations regarding the signs that we put up in the store, so nothing right now. Yeah, nice. Amanda, how about you? I imagine maybe maybe a couple? Yeah, um, so we started sending out communications and FDA updates to our system fairly early. Um, probably about a year before the 2017 enforcement deadline. Um, and we used several different communication methods. You know, we had e-blast newsletters, sort of, et cetera. And honestly, we probably over-communicated a little bit. But for us, uh, one of the most effective tools was our ops team. They're visiting stores. They're face-to-face -face with our franchisees. And as they visited those stores, an FDA update and calorie counts, um, they've been a part of every conversation. And at first, you know, a lot of our franchisees' comments were, you know, do we have to do this? Do you really think it's going to go into effect? It's already been delayed once. Um, and then as these conversations, they started to evolve, and we ultimately got to the place where, um, while they didn't all necessarily agree with the regulations, all of our franchisees understood, and, and they were prepared to comply. Um, in fact, when the, uh, when the regulations were delayed, um, 
this you know, second time in 2017, uh, we left it up to each operator to decide for themselves whether or not to post the calorie counted boards. And 80% of our system chose to go ahead and put them up. All right. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> we get Carrie on that one. Yeah, Carrie, you're up next. Hello. So we are family owned and operated. But there was a little bit of discussion up front, I think, from the sales team with fear that posting calories would impact their sales. But the more we talked about it and the more they understood that it was going to just give our shoppers different choices, not necessarily have our shoppers decide they're not going to eat there, um, it really became the mantra of it's the right thing to do, regardless of what happened with the deadline. And that really funneled down to the individual stores and departments here at Big Y. So the implementation execution was streamlined. And then just seeing that the family that owns Big Y is behind it and the upper management was behind it and it's a requirement for the stores and if they're kind of veering off path, it's going to make the company liable. Um, as a whole, I think that's what really helped rein any discussion about disagreeing or agreeing with the mandate and just knowing that this is the right thing to do for our customers, so we're going to do it. Very good. Uh, you know, that just hit on, hit on leadership, right? The leadership team, people in upper management, they're all on board, and it just makes it easier for other people, too. I think that's that's a huge thing there. All right, so... We're going to have time for two more questions, and I'm going to hit number seven, then I'll skip to number ten after that, because I definitely want to uh, get that question out. <clears throat> so question seven for Amanda, if you could go back and do anything in the process differently, what would it be and why? You know, I gave this one uh, quite a bit of consideration, and, and honestly, I feel like we went about this in the best and most effective way um, for our brand. We were very thorough. We were very systematic. We had the right nutrition partner in Minnie Trimpo. Julie was extremely informative. She helped us to understand the regulations. And most importantly, I feel like she um, took the time to understand how they related to the Leeds brand. Um, so I, I came to the place with, where I would say, if anything, we could have started earlier. We chose to start our system rollout in March of 2017 which was only two months prior to the then enforcement deadline. We chose March because it took us until then until to be ready. And so from a rollout perspective, we packed a lot into that two-month window. It worked, and we got it all out. But in thinking critically of our plan, uh, it, it may have been overwhelming at the store level when you consider all the components and that in a lot of ways some of this was new information and processes. Um, we gave ourselves a year to get it done, but we probably should have planned on 15 to 18 months. Yeah, wow, wow. Okay, Carrie, how about you on this one? Anything you do done differently? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat of thinking, you know, we did it the way that I think we would have regardless of how much time we had, and because supplier information changes, pretty frequently. I think that sprint we had at the end um, due to those changes would have happened regardless if we added a few months more out. Um, so my initial answer was, yeah, maybe we start working on the marketing tools a few months earlier. But honestly, our marketing tools probably would have continued getting updated along the way because of different additions to the menus and different supplier ingredient changes. So I think we worked so far out and we didn't lose steam when the deadline was extended and really took our time and, and, and breathed up until, you know, the last probably four or five months of making sure we're chugging everything out that we knew we needed to have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Michael, yourself, Speedway. Yeah, really, I think uh, – I'll just echo what they've been saying. I think we, we had the right plan up front. Um, we jumped on it early. We had executive leaders who were worried about the penalties and what could happen, and obviously the delays and the delays. Um, I think the only thing that I would probably have done is I created my own unneeded stress. 
and <laughs> caused me to fall behind on projects because I was trying to figure out the guidelines and interpret them so I'd understand what we had to do when I probably should have researched faster and got Menu Trinfo on board quicker than I did. Um, yeah. But it's all good now. Yeah, good, <laughs> good. All right, great. So I'm going to jump to this question number 10 here. And Amanda, we'll start with you. And this is just simply what advice would you give to other establishments? And be straightforward with it, you know. Yeah, I, I have two things. Um, one, I would say understand the FDA's definition of a menu board and how it relates to you. Uh, we almost overlooked a few areas, uh, and then we even made some changes to how things are printed as a direct result of what the FDA considered a primary writing. Uh, and then the second thing I'd say is don't try to do it by yourself. It was never a consideration for us, and I think the right nutritional partner is, is crucial. Uh, and for everybody on the call, uh, you know, TJ nor Claire, they didn't pass me a note. They didn't ask me to say this. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> our partnership with them, it has been and continues to be invaluable. Um, their education, support, and not to mention patience has been in the true spirit of partnership. I, I feel like Julie really took the time to understand the Leeds brand and its recipes and how the FDA regulations related to us and the steps necessary to be compliant and then to make sure we had good and accurate nutritional information. Um, and then after all that was done, she helped us to understand what other areas within our restaurants requ required caloric values. Uh, if it weren't for her guidance, we wouldn't have included the beverage machine or the deli case posters with our initial rollout. Um, and she, she's wow. been very helpful also with some specific marketing materials that our operators, our franchisees are printing at a local store level as, as well. So, yeah, two things. Understand what the FDA considers a menu board and don't try and do it by yourself. Yeah. All right. Well, Carrie, how about yourself? What, what piece of advice? So I will reiterate again what Amanda said. Um, my first answer is utilize outside expertise if possible. It, it frees up so much time. It frees up that center of the liability, and it's amazing to have a soundboard of people that do this day in and day out, and so, like I said, if it's been a while since I looked at it, my brain's a little foggy, which it's usually, <laughs> um, it's good to get clarification of how we're going to do it if I'm remembering things correctly and we should do it, versus, you know, inadvertently missing something and proofing, you know, even having another set of eyes looking at it and making sure you're not tying up so many resources that are already being tapped on a regular basis internally and having that outside guidance. That, that would be my number one advice is don't try to do it all by yourself, even if you have a registered dietitian on staff. Um, I know other retailers that have their dietitian team do it when they have a small team, and it pretty much sucks up all of their time. So use outside expertise. Good advice. Michael, I, I think I could probably answer this for you, but uh, I'll let you go ahead and tell us what advice you give. Yeah, it's just real fast is, you know, get an expert on your team like Menu Trinfo. It, it's, uh, again, I say it, it's priceless. Um, you, you know when you go and you talk to them, they give you good advice what to do. You don't have to waste time and energy going down different paths. Um, understand them all and then get help in a hurry, I guess, because this can't happen overnight. And depending on how large your your menu is and all that, it, it can take some time. But that first step, I guess, is picking up the phone and maybe calling someone like Menu Trinfo and start having conversation. Yeah, so true. So true. <laughs> all right, guys, well, we have run out of time for answering any questions. Do apologize for that. However, I do want to let you guys know that there is a post survey. We uh, love to get feedback. That's how we make ourselves better and, and so we can help others as well out there. So please take the time and, and fill that survey out if you would. If you guys want to stay up on current news, legislation, and more, you can sign up for our newsletter as well at menutrinfo.com. Check it out there. And finally, if you're looking for some help with the nutrition information or getting your menus and menu boards compliant, 
hey, we're here for you. We, we definitely want to help you. Uh, you guys probably all want Julie to help you <laughs> at this point, but uh, we do have other great people on staff as well. So, if, yeah, if you're interested, hit us up at info at menutrinfo.com or give us a call, 970-295-4370. Um, and at this time, we'd like to just go ahead and and close this thing out, say, we, say how much we appreciate our panelists for coming out today to answer some questions and talk to other folks out there to give them that insight. Uh, it was super valuable for me. I was really excited to have you guys and on here and listen, and listen to what you had to say, and, and it was definitely worth my time as well. Claire, you got any final words? I just want to say thank you again to all of our panelists. Um, your experience is invaluable, um, and I think that all the participants here um, could feel that, and we're so lucky to call you all partners. Um, and look forward to the next seven weeks leading up to um, the menu labeling deadline. Um, and yeah, we'll see where this thing goes. But thank you again, um, panelists and participants. Um, and please reach out if there's anything that we can do for you. We hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Thanks.